Hi, welcome to our Pharma Topics channel. Welcome to the third series of clinical research and pharmacovigilance. In this video, we are going to see about the phases of clinical trials, what is institutional review board, and what are randomized control trials. Let us see the phases of clinical trials. It is four phases. First, phase one, it assesses the safety. Uh, healthy volunteers are recruited it is uh, less than 100 participants and phase 2 is related to efficacy it includes patient population 100 to 300 patients are recruited and phase 3 is a confirmation trial it includes patient population 300 to 3000 patients are recruited and it uh, compares the existing uh, treatment with the uh, test drug phase 4 is a follow up or uh, post marketing surveillance it includes patient population. It includes several thousand patients. It is also called PMS. Let us see what is Institutional Review Board, IRB. Institutional Review Board uh, is also known as Ethics Review Committee or Research Ethics Board in some regions. It is an independent committee responsible for reviewing and approving uh, research involving human participants to ensure that it is conducted ethically, legally and with the due consideration for participants' rights and welfare. IRB plays a crucial role in protecting the rights, safety and well-being of the research participants. IRBs are established at institutions that conduct research involving human participants such as universities, hospitals and research organizations. They work to ensure that the research is conducted in a manner that respects the rights, dignity and autonomy of the participants and upholds the highest ethical standards. Let us see the key functions and responsibilities of IRB. First is ethical review. IRBs review the research protocols to determine whether the proposed research meets the ethical standards and guidelines. This includes evaluating the potential risks and benefits to the participants. And then informed consent. IRBs ensure that the informed consent documents accurately and comprehensively explain the nature of the research, potential risks and benefits, procedures and participants, participants rights. They review and approve informed consent forms to make sure they are clear and understandable. Then participant protection. IRB assesses whether the potential benefits of the research justify any risks or discomfort that participants might experience. They also evaluate whether the vulnerable populations such as children, prisoners, pregnant women and individuals with cognitive impairments are adequately protected. Privacy and confidentiality. IRBs review how participant data will be collected, stored and managed to ensure privacy and confidentiality are, confidentiality are maintained. Then study design and methods. IRB assesses the scientific validity and methodology of the research, making sure it is well designed and likely to produce meaningful results. Then protocol changes. If researchers need to make changes to their approved protocols, they must first seek the IRB approval before implementing or amending any modifications. Ongoing monitoring. Some IRBs engage in ongoing monitoring of the approved studies to ensure that the research activities continue to adhere to the ethical standards and regulations. Then risk assessment. IRBs evaluate the potential uh, physical, psychological, social, legal and economic, economic risks that participants might face during their research. Approval and documentation. After a thorough review, if the IRB is satisfied that the research meets the ethical standards, it provides formal approval to the study to proceed. This approval is documented and usually includes a letter detailing the conditions and uh, the requirements for the study. Education and training. IRBs often provide uh, guidance, education and training to the researchers to help them understand and adhere to the ethical principles and regulatory requirements. Let us see what is a randomized controlled trial. So here the patient population is selected. 
and uh, using uh, randomization like uh, throwing a die every fifth person will go for this every fourth person will go for this uh, grouping that is called a randomization so you use a randomization technique and you uh, segregate the people into control and treatment then you make a follow up what happens to the uh, study outcome then you compare the results for example if you take uh, 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 people with uh, who are smokers in the general population you take it and you take it as a control and a treatment and you make a follow up and compare the results key features of randomized control trials randomization participants are randomly assigned to different groups such as treatment group and a control group randomization helps ensure that the each group is similar in terms of baseline characteristics reducing the risk of bias and enhancing the comparability comparability of the groups control group the control group either receives a placebo inactive substance or an existing treatment allowing the researchers to compare the effects of uh, the experimental treatment with the baseline or established protocol blinding blinding or masking is used to reduce the bias single blind studies involve participants not knowing their group assignment while the double blind studies involve both the participants and the researchers being unaware of the group assignments then outcome measures specific outcome measures are chosen to evaluate the effects of the intervention these measures could include improvements in symptoms disease progression survival rates or any other relevant end points then random sample the goal is to use a random sample of participants from a larger population to ensure that the results can be generalized beyond the study sample statistical analysis statistical methods are used to analyze the data and determine whether any observed differences between the treatment and control groups are statistically significant and not due to chance ethical considerations ethical principles are followed throughout the trial including obtaining the informed consent from the participants and prioritizing their safety and well-being casualty interference inference the randomized design of an uh, randomized control trial allows for stronger causal inferences to be made about the relationship between the intervention and the observed outcomes a randomized control trials are widely regarded as uh, one of the most rigorous uh, study designs for evaluating the efficacy and safety of medical interventions they are randomly or commonly used in clinical research to assess the new drugs therapies medical devices behavioral interventions and other healthcare interventions by randomly assigning the participants and using the control groups the randomized control trials help researchers identify the specific effects of the intervention while minimizing the biases that could affect the study's validity so it's a very short uh, information of uh, institutional review board and randomized control trials i hope it will be useful for you thank you for listening happy learning kindly share this to more of your friends if you like this video kindly press the like button kindly subscribe to our pharma topics channel kindly go through all the series of video videos in the playlist uh, clinical research and pharmacovigilance in the pharma topics channel and uh, score well in the forthcoming exams